So we are going to learn about elementary matrices. Now the definition of an elementary matrix is that you take the identity matrix and you perform exactly one elementary row operation. So there are three different elementary row operations, which means there are three types of elementary matrices. The first is that you can switch two different rows. So for example, if you take the matrix 0, 1, 1, 0, this is an elementary matrix because we take the identity, which is 1, 0, 0, 1, and then we swap these two rows around. So that's one elementary row operation. Another is we take a row and multiply it by a constant. So for example, if we take 1, 0, 0, 1, and then multiply the first row by 7, then we get 7, 0, 0, 1. So that is another type of elementary matrix. The third type is we take a row and we add some constant times a different row. So for example, if we take 1, 0, 0, 1, and we add 3 times the first row to the second row, then we'll get 1, 0, 3, 1 because we do three times one zero and then add it to the second row here. This is another elementary matrix. So that's the definition of elementary matrices, which is nice, but it's kind of like, who cares? Like why do elementary matrices get their own name? Why are they so important? Well, we're going to talk about why they're important later, but there's one specific interesting property of elementary matrices that makes them important in the first place, and that is left multiplying an elementary matrix by some other matrix has the same effect as performing the row operation that got you this elementary matrix. So let's look at an example. We have the elementary matrix 0, 1, 1, 0, and we want to multiply it by some matrix A, B, C, D. Now, we got the matrix 0, 1, 1, 0 by taking the identity and swapping the two rows. So if we multiply these matrices together, the answer that we should get is the same answer as we would get by just swapping the rows of this matrix. So we should get C, D, A, B. And in fact, if you do this matrix multiplication here, that is exactly what you will get. So this works for all elementary matrices, and we're gonna look at why for each of these cases. So let's start out by looking at this matrix that we get by swapping these two rows. What is this matrix saying? Well, if you look back at my video on what a matrix represents, which there will be a link in the description, we can think about these numbers as corresponding to inputs and outputs from a matrix. Now, in my video about what a matrix represents, I talked about the rows as being x's and y's because I was looking at a more geometric interpretation. But in this case, because we're looking at row operations, we'll think about this as just row one and row two. So what is this matrix saying? Well, first of all, we have this one here. And what it means, first of all, it's in the second column. So it's saying that we take the second row as an input. And it's in the first row, which means we get the first row as an output. So in other words, it's saying that an input from the second row gives us an equivalent output, because this is a 1, on the first row. For example, this C is in the second row, which means we're going to get a C in the first row when we finish up. Similarly, this D is in the second row. It's going to get moved to the first row. This one is doing the same thing. It's saying we take an input from the first row and we get an output from the second row. So this A is in the first row, it gets moved to the second row, and this B also gets moved to the second row. And we see that the rows have been swapped. So it's just saying the first row gets moved to the second, the second row gets moved to the first. And we can extend this as well to a larger matrix. So say, instead of a two by two matrix, we took the three by three identity matrix, this matrix right here, and we swapped the first two rows. So again, we took the three by three identity matrix and flipped these rows around. What happens now? Well, we've added this extra one here, and what it's saying is inputs from the third row go to outputs on the third row with the exact same output value, which means that the third row doesn't get changed at all but these two rows get switched in the exact same way that they did before. So if we multiply this by some matrix, say 1, 2, 3, negative 4, negative 5, 0, 0, 1, 1, what we're going to get is that the first row inputs go to the second row. So 1, 2, 3 becomes our second row. The second row inputs go to the first row. 
So then we get negative 4, negative 5, 0 across the top, and the third row stays where it is, 0, 1, 1, just like that. So that is the first type of elementary matrix. Now let's look at the next one. We want to look at the case where we multiply one of the rows by a constant. So what is this matrix saying? We have 7, 0, 0, 1. Well, just like in the case of the 3 by 3 matrix, this one says second row inputs go to second row outputs at the exact same magnitude. But this time we have a 7 up here, which says first row inputs go to first row outputs, but those outputs are going to be 7 times larger than the inputs. So for example, we have A, B, C, D right here. We multiply these. The second row is going to stay the same. So you get C, D down here. But on the first row, this A is going to get mapped to 7 times A in the first row. And the B will become 7 times B. So again, we see that this elementary matrix, we multiply the top row by 7. And when we multiply it by this matrix, it's the exact same effect. Last one right here. We have the matrix 1, 0, 3, 1. In this matrix, we got by taking the second row and adding three times the first row. So what is this matrix saying? Well, first of all, we have these ones along the diagonal. And what those mean is that a first row input becomes an equivalent first row output, and a second row input becomes an equivalent second row output. So we're going to get some form of our original matrix coming out. For example, if we multiply by A, B, C, D, we're going to get out A, B, C, D. That's what these ones are telling us. However, we also have this 3 here. It's in the first column, so we're looking at first row inputs, and it's in the second row, so we're looking at second row outputs, which means these A's and B's are going to get moved down to the second row as well, three times larger. So the second row isn't just going to be C, D. It's going to be C plus 3A, and then D plus 3B. So in each case, the first row on this matrix is getting mapped to three times that in the second row. And again, we see that this final matrix is the same as what we would get if we took the second row and added three times the first row, which is what we did to this matrix over here. So elementary matrices come from doing one elementary row operation on the identity matrix. And when you left multiply it by some other matrix, it has the same effect as performing that row operation on the matrix. We'll talk about why this is important in my next video about inverses.